guys. Welcome back to the channel. Going to be working on a little project on Able today. It's something uh, a lot of you may be interested in learning how to do. It will be the first time I have ever done this. Uh, and the last time it was done when, is when we had the power upgrade uh, from 225 horsepower to 290 horsepower. Let me show what we... Let me show you what we've got going on here. So I've printed up out of the technical manual the procedure on how to do this. And so what we're going to be working on today is um, just updating the valve clearance. This is something you want to check. Um, I don't know the exact interval, to be honest with you, on these trucks or these Caterpillar engines. So I'm not sure what the interval is. I do know, however, that we have over 15,000 miles since it was last done. So this is something I'm just gonna check. Um, the last thing you wanna do is be in the middle of a forest and drop a valve or something like that. That would be really a uh, bad day for anybody that, that happens to you. However, uh, I've got some tools set up here and um, it looks like we're going for an intake adjustment of 15 thousandths and exhaust for 25 thousandths. So I've got a set of feeler gauges here set up for those. Um, and then the jam nut is very specific here. It's got a huge range from 120 or 156 to 276 pound inch. And if you divide 276 by uh, 12, you get 23 foot pounds since I don't have a torque wrench that has inch pounds we're going to use foot pounds so there you go 23 foot pounds on those little jam nuts there is supposedly a locator hole on the side of the engine that has the starter so it looks like you pull out a little bolt and then you can stick a feeler pin in there as somebody spins the alternator bolt which will turn the crankshaft to get this lined up so you'll either be at one position or the other you'll either be at top dead center for your compression or top dead center for your I don't know what you call it exhaust probably but you'll be at the opposite so you'll start at one or the other uh, and then you can you can see here you've got your top center compression stroke and your top yeah exhaust stroke so those are the ones that you want to adjust uh, it's still a little bit dark out, but we're going to get Abel spun around here, and then I will try to walk you guys through how I go about doing this. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but as always, this is something that I... It's good to know how to do this stuff on your truck. Uh, I did purchase a valve cover gasket. They're really cheap, less than 20 bucks shipped in case I need it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to need it or not, but it's just good to have on hand. But anyhow, let's get started.
Okay, here we are. We've got the uh, valve cover taken off, and uh, I'm going to use a new gasket. You saw me cleaning up the uh, edges and everything on it. Looks like the original gasket that was installed from the factory, and they had a little bit of RTV on uh, some of the spaces between the bolts there to hold that gasket in place while they installed it. So now we are at the point where we need to remove this bolt. That, this bolt right here and uh, get some sort of a pin or a screwdriver or something in there and then I might have to, oh I might see if the fabulous Willow can come out and turn the motor over while I get something in there to try and locate that hole that's in the flywheel to line up to top dead center. Guys, I had Willow turn the motor over while I sat here with a tiny little screwdriver and there is a hole in there. I'm not sure what the bolt threads are. They want you to put a bolt in there. But if you can get it lined up with the screwdriver, you're, you're close enough. Uh, I'm going to figure out what valves are loose here. Um, if they're tight, you don't want to you don't want to mess with them. But if they're loose, like this one's loose, that one's loose. That one's loose. So I'm going to go through here. That one's loose. Um, and do the feeler gauge and uh, adjustment on here. So uh, I think I'm also going to grab a paint pen so I know that I did that one. But let's keep moving forward. Hey guys, this took me a minute to... Um, kind of orient myself with a cap motor but basically what we're looking for is intake valves on one two and four and exhaust valves on one three and five so and that's starting from the flat they're numbering the cylinders from the flywheel side of the motor so one two three four five and then six so right now if you go to wiggle your rocker arms they should be loose on the ones that are listed so intake exhaust on all of them intake exhaust intake exhaust so the exhaust on one three and five so those will get adjusted and then the intake on one two and four so we'll start with that and then you rotate the motor 360 degrees and you do everything that's left over so you would have all the ones that are basically tight right now so let's start with uh, this adjustment first No, no, I'm, okay. No. All right, that part 
it's already been done. All right. It's uh, so I take it uh, somebody got to the alignment dower right on this, huh? The what? Uh, the, the alignment to Dow that aligns your crank, uh, it aligns your flywheel so you, oh, you yeah. can find your, uh, yep, there's a little, little yeah, poke hole over here. Yeah, I stuck a screwdriver. It's in a C. It, 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 if somebody ever put this trans Right, guys there you have it got uh, everything put back together I uh, tightened up the alternator belts they were a little bit loose and uh, we're ready to lower the cab back down and then we'll start it up and listen to all the valves hit the pistons and then we'll go out and look for a new motor no no that's not gonna happen um, the valves weren't that bad uh, one of them was a little bit tight, but uh, out of all, let's see, six times two, out of all 12 valves, nothing was really bad at all. So, um, I don't know what the interval was on these. Like I said, there's so many different answers online, but I'm going to guess that if you adjust them every 30,000 miles, you should be okay. That's probably even more extreme than it should be, but... Um, we've taken this truck all over the place, and uh, it doesn't look like they've moved very much at all. So uh, that just goes to the reliability of these uh, 3116 motors. They're well known for that. But let's get the cab back down and start start it back up and just make sure that nothing's odd. Here we go, moment of truth. normal to me motors a little bit quieter I guess probably because the alternator belt was loose so yeah seems to be just fine yeah guys everything everything seems fine 
Uh, that took me about three hours, it's, but it's the first time I've ever done one, so I don't think it would take me that long if I had to do it again. But other than that, I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you like this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. And stay tuned. We're getting the winter maintenance done here on Rusty, and we're going to be heading up to the mountains at some point, hopefully when the snow starts. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Other than that, I hope you guys are taking care of each other. Staying safe. And as always, I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.